Hi there. Welcome back to Rear Engine Shop. Today we're going to get started on my 84 Pontiac Bureau pace car. By started, I mean we're going to do more work on it because we've already started. That makes sense. So let's get to it. So, it's September of 2022, which means I've officially had this car 11 years. That's pretty neat. It's great. It means I've been working on it regularly. No, not at all. So, over here we have the pile of parts and the engine that's going to go in it. It's just a stock Iron Duke. We're really not doing any performance stuff to it because it's an Iron Duke. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. But before we can do any of that stuff, I think our next step on this car here is to get the factory engine, automatic transmission subframe all dropped out of it. So then we can start working on that outside of the car and we can start making the frame repairs and making the trunk corners and all the stuff we have to do to the car. So in this video, we're gonna get the subframe out with the engine and trans on it. I'm sure it's gonna be easy. I'm sure it's going to be fun. All the bolts are going to come right loose. I mean, there's hardly any rust on this car, right? It's probably not going to be fun. It's probably not going to be easy. Probably not going to be five minutes. But if I don't start on it, we're never going to get this done. And I'd really like to drive this car next year. So that being said, I'm going to start by disconnecting coolant lines. Take the shift cable loose, we have to take the throttle cable loose, we have to take the battery cables loose. There's the main wiring connector back there we've got to take off. How long is it? And we have to get the struts unbolted from the knuckles and the brake calipers off of the knuckles. Because I'm going to lower knuckles and everything down with the subframe. Because we have to put struts in this as well. That'll make all that easier somehow. So, let's get the coolant drained. I don't know if I'm going to drain the oil or not. And then we can start taking hoses off. Oh, trans cooler lines. We've got to take trans cooler lines off too. This is an automatic. Not many automatic cars around here. So let's do that. Let's do that. This is going to be great. It's going to be easy. Alright guys, we're under the car here on the driver's side. Here's the trans cooler lines that we have to take off, which those look pretty cracked up, so we'll probably have to replace those, which I'm probably gonna replace everything here. And this is our coolant hose. And this is the coolant tube that goes under the car up to the front. I'm gonna take that loose right there. And then we're gonna do the same over on the other side, and that should drain our coolant out. If I can't get this clamp loose, I'm just gonna cut the hose because I'm putting new hoses in this car. So let's get this clamp taken off, and we'll do these while we're down here, and we'll let the coolant drain, and hopefully I don't wear too much of it. Oh yeah, that's rusty, of course. <sighs> okay, maybe we'll try a ratchet. There's that. Yeah, got a little on ya. Diesel in here. Make a giant mess all over here. You guys got covered in coolant. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm putting all new coolant hoses on it. So I don't know why I wasted so much time getting that clamp off there. I could have just cut it for now. So I think that's what I'll do on the other side. And maybe not. Somebody's replaced this hose. This clamp looks pretty easy to get to. See how rusty it is? This is under the battery tray. So that's probably from leaky battery. I wonder what that is. Hey there, little buddy. Anyway, gonna get that off. Then we can get the wiring and stuff loose. And we're gonna take the struts loose here with those guys. Man, this lens is still dirty. And these are the subframe bolts, engine cradle. I don't know, whatever you wanna call this thing. What do you wanna bet? Those are probably seized in these bushings. That's gonna be great. Well, if they're seized in the bushing, 
I guess we'll just sawzall all them. That'll be great. And here we go, we're under the car. You can see down here, I mean, there's a little bit of surface rust. There's no holes. Underside of the car itself, I mean, it looks good. Still got all these plugs in it. And those normally rust out. So, it's just the back, which is why I want to save this car. Oh boy. Really should have a bucket on this side too. But I don't. Oh yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be great. Oh, in my eye. Dang it. Apparently my clamp is just gonna come apart. Come on off of there, flexi hose. Oh. And you guys got more on you. All right, well, you keep getting in the wrong place, I guess. So next, caliper, these two bolts. Shoot a little PB blaster juice on them. Hopefully that'll help. Maybe we'll put some on these subframe bolts too. It's probably not gonna do any good at this point. I'll drop the bottle. I'm up in here too. Yeah. Get all in there. Soak her down. Oh, probably a little late for that. Anybody remember what size these scalper bolts are? I don't. Well, this caliper has a broken bleeder on it. It's a good thing we're putting new ones on it. And settle down, buddy. I'm all excited for no reason. See, so yeah, we've got all new calipers. You got more cooling on you. What are you doing? We got all new calipers, all new uh, rubber brake lines, all new everything. Except for the stuff we don't have. That makes sense. You done draining yet, buddy? Caliper is loose, except yeah, it can stay like that. We're gonna get these bolts off. You wanna bet I grabbed the wrong size there? Nope. And it's loose. Now we just gotta do the other side. And that's connected, so that'll be all right. We're back on the driver's side. Go ahead and lube things up again. Do do. Remind me to order parking brake cables for this. I don't think I have new ones in my pile of new parts. For as much stuff as I have, I think we're gonna find a lot of stuff that I don't. Bin. Good, so I got stuff everywhere. That one's loose. All right, so now we're up here. We gotta take cruise control cable loose, shift cables right here, wirings on the firewall, AC lines, We'll get the throttle cable loose and flipped off for the side. Battery out, battery cables out, dog bone mount. There's a couple vacuum lines, one here, one here. And then we can start to lower it down and we can start pulling on everything we totally forgot to take off. Oh, fuel lines, it's another important one. And then we can panic because we didn't have everything off and unhook whatever we forgot. All right, let's do it. That's down there. Battery out of here. Oh, 
don't know what good that ground was doing. Everything's rusted around it. This car is clean, one owner. Tidy, tidy, lefty, loosey. Indy Fiero Rusty. Vacuum line. Throttle cable's loose. Rough looking. This is heater hose right here. There's that off there. Another vacuum line. Come off. Cruise control cable that can come down with the engine. Take the fuel lines loose. I believe I have new fuel lines for this as well from the Fiero store. At least one of them. I'd love to find the Holly performance intake and throttle body for this thing. I think that would be cool to do. But that stuff is not the easiest to find. Okay. Ow. So a biscuit. Well, I'm going to let PP Blaster soak into that for a little bit. It's late. And I have had enough for the night. So when we come back, we're going to get this fuel line off. And then I think we're down to the electronics. Big connector there. And then there's a connector inside the car behind the console we have to take loose and put through the firewall. AC lines. And then we're ready to fight with the subframe bolts. Then we can drop this whole thing out and get it out of the car. So I will see you guys. I would like to say tomorrow, but it probably won't be. It'll probably be a few days from now. But I'll see you then. Many months later. Hey guys, we're back for day two on the Indy Fiero. I don't know, can I call it day two if it's been two, three months? I don't know, we're, we're back on the Indy Fiero. Anyway, let's continue where we were, which don't remember where that was. But looking at this, I can see there's a fuel line that needs to come off. Shift cable, the AC lines, and we got wiring, the C500 connector, the connector inside the car behind the uh, center consoles, gotta come out. Relays have to get unbolted. And then I think we're ready to drop this out and uh, yeah, fight with those subframe bolts that I'm sure will be a fight. So before we get all dirty, let's go inside and we'll do the wiring inside the car. Yeah, not looking forward to those subframe bolts. All right, so in here I got all kinds of garbage. And by garbage, I mean parts of the car. You can also see I have the headliner just, you know, hanging in the way. It's great. But we got to take some of this stuff apart, which I have, you know, no tools to do any of this. What's going on here? Oh, double stick tape. Is this loose already? Oh, <laughs> it's already loose. Yep, mm hmm headliner, yep, it's great. So we got to get the ALDL port. And there's these two connectors here and the computer. Yeah, strong. Get all this stuff disconnected and then shoved through the firewall. I don't remember taking this stuff apart. That's great. Come on, there you go. Careful with that. And these things, you gotta yeah, get these out. Can't see a thing. There's that half. Here's that half. All right. Seven mil, we'll get those off. All right, take these off. The real question is, will I ever remember how to get this car back together? those down there where I remember where they're at. There's that. Dig 
get her through the firewall. I remember how. There we go. All right, back out to the engine bay. So out here, this is the wiring. tight. Maybe I should take these AC lines off. These relays here have to come off. You know, they're in the wiring there too. It's great. It's great. At least the top two do. I don't remember if the bottom ones do. And then uh, that connector back there has got to come off. The C500 connector. Then this can all lay this way. Maybe if I get these loose, I'll be able to get this wiring out. Did this AC have charge? God, I don't remember. All right. Heat shield here. A couple 13s for those, it looks like. And unbolt the AC lines and fold it out. Sure, why not? Yeah, there's that one. Up there. Put this one here. Great. Right. Yep, there we go. That's gonna work out wonderful here. Okay, yep, we're doing it that way. Okay. That comes up. Sure, you can go down there. AC lines. What size are those? Found the wrench for those. Here. Wrong way. Nope, a little more. Yeah, see, that's the size right there. Does it have a charge in it? Probably not. Nope. Go smaller for this one. Oh, that's too small. There we go. See, perfect size. Just waiting to swing this wrench right through the back window. That'd be great. Great. That'd be great. There we go. I can go like that. All right. Now, wiring, right? Is that where I was at? Yeah, that's where I was at. Take these relays loose. Well, how long is this bolt? Seriously? Is that one? One next to it? There's that one. Put these bolts somewhere. Well, I'll never remember where they're at in the car works. Now, hmm, okay. What about this? Is this the wrong size for this? No. Oh, what up here? That's stripped. Great. All right. Different size. Didn't have to keep spinning it. I'm just gonna get all this wiring through here, which you're probably gonna have to go in the car to do. There you go. Right, so the wiring is ready to come out now. Um, we got this vacuum supply line for the brake booster. That's got to come off. Oh, and this fuel line that I really don't want to fight with. Been spraying PB Blaster on that, so that should come off. Where was I? Oh, vacuum line. There's the line. Shift cable's got to come off. I'm going to put the 13 away. 
Great. Okay, shift cable. It's a clamp right there. Bolt right there, then that'll come off. And then there's a heater core line, you know, back there that we gotta get off. And then I think we can go underneath it and fight with the subframe bolts. Golly, the inside of that connector is yuck. Gonna have to clean that up. All right. Need a bigger pry bar. That should do. Maybe too big. There's the clip. And drop it. There's the clip. Now we'll go for this nut here. And then... There, shift cable's out. Swing that bad boy. Put it over here, somewhere. Like that. Stay. Put the nut back on the end of it here so I don't lose that. So probably don't have more of those. And yeah. Now, just gotta get this pesky fuel line right here off. So let's see what we can destroy there. Don't remember what size this stuff is, so I grabbed a little bit of everything. Yeah. And that line is rusted to itself. Oh, there we go. Ha! Thank you, PB Blaster. So about every time I've been out here over the last couple months, I've been spraying this line. Because the line was stuck on its threaded nut. Now it's not. Been spraying the subframe bolts too, so let's hope that did something. There. Fuel line. Check. That's the TV cable. It doesn't have to come off. Good there. Trans cooler lines are already off. Nope, got a ground cable. I gotta get that off of there. That'll definitely hold us up. Okay, ground cable's off. Put this bolt back in the hole so I don't lose it. Okay. All right, now we're over here on the passenger side. Coolant hose right there is one of the heater hoses. I gotta get that off. God, then are we good? And we might be good on the top. Glad I waited two months to work on this. Where's my screwdriver? Well, what did we just do there? Oh, we just spun the nut right out of the clamp. That's not supposed to happen. Pretty sure I have this hose. I think I'm just gonna cut it with a razor blade. All right, this in the dark. There we go. Try not to cut myself, because that would make this take another two months. Come on, line. Now, do you get out of the way? Throttle cable, you're not invited to this party right now. I don't get paid enough for this. Well, now I can't see where it's cut. Let's get through it. Come on. There we go. I think that's it up here. We got uh, them things. We got those things. We got that. Yeah. I think we're good to go underneath now. And do the subframe bolts that I'm sure are going to fight me. Actually, first, got to figure out how I'm going to do this. Yes, there's a two post lift over there, but as you see, there's, you know, red Fiero, blue Fiero. I have nowhere really to put those. Yeah, that's right, Pontiac 6000 wagon project. Trans Am. Uh, so, I think the way I'm gonna do this is the way I used to do it. I'm gonna put the front wheels back on, take the front off the jack stands, and then uh, I'll get these subframe bolts loose, make sure they're going to come loose. And then I'll uh, take the back end off of the jack stands with the cherry picker. And I'll use this thing here for the trunk. And I'll lift it with a chain here. And I will lift the car off of the engine. The subframe will sit on the cherry picker, lift the car off of it. Once the car is high enough to get the subframe out, we'll put jack stands under the back of the car. We'll slide the cherry picker and engine, cradle, and all that out from under the car. And then we'll get the car back on, you know, four jack stands. So it's up nice in the air for us to start doing all the rust repair. Because, you know, there's going to be quite a bit. Great. 
<sighs> so let's go underneath. Actually, first we'll put the tires and wheels back on the front. Knock you over. That would be great. I got these plastic bins. I've been putting all the bolts from the subframe and suspension, any trim, whatever, in these. So this one is the driver's side one. There's one on the other side for the passenger side. Keeps everything organized. Don't worry, that's just all the tools falling off the roof. All right, guys, so we're here under the car. Rusty. Anyway, these are the bolts we need to get out in the rear. And there's two in the front that are different than these. These ones are famous for knocking the nut loose. It's up here and just having the nut spin. And then you got to cut a hole in the frame and get in there with a wrench. Of course, I might not have to cut a hole in my frame. Nature did it for me. But regardless, that makes it more difficult. So I'm going to try to break these loose by hand. There's one on this side, one on the other side. Man. Subframe's a bit rusty too. Oof. And I grabbed the wrong size socket. What size is that? 14, not a 14. Keep in mind, these are probably not metric because 1984. And what do you want to bet these are going to fight me? Oh, knock it off the dang jack stands on top of myself. That would be great. Oh, no. Is it coming out? The answer is no. Great. Oh, lordy. Well, maybe I should start with the front ones. I don't know. Let's go see if we can get the other side to come loose. I'm betting not. All right, here we are on the passenger side. Anybody want to place any bets on what's going to happen? That one just spinning its stuff too? Yep. Great. Man, I'm not excited right now. All right, let's just pretend like that didn't happen. Let's try to take the front ones loose. And then when those ones are seized in the bushings, I can be even more thrilled than what I am right now. <sighs> Not having fun. Oh boy. All right, so these bolts go through. And there's a nut on the back side. Which don't remember what size they are. And it's great because, you know, we're dripping coolant on ourselves here. Okay, so those are an 18. Take the nut off this side. Hit myself in the face. that loose slightly but this side also an 18 Let's see what we can do this one bolt right three probably not stop pushing No, it is definitely not stuck in the bushing because it is starting to come out. So. Oh, that's good. That's good. 
because yeah I don't really feel like dealing with that. So now we just gotta go break the other side free and see if that one is stuck in its bushing. And if it's not, then I think we're gonna go ahead and get this off the jack stands and lower down onto the engine crane, cherry picker, whatever you wanna call it. And then we can get these bolts all the way out and then we can get the front ones. The front ones? These are the front ones. And we can get the rear ones all the way out by cutting holes in the car that's already looked like Swiss cheese, so. That's fine, great, normal, wonderful. Okay, on this side, I can use not a 19. Idiot. Oh, idiot. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do a nut first. That makes more sense. Where's my creeper? Okay. Now, let's see. Good lord. I'm getting too old for this. Oh, there's that side. Now, this side. Come on. Let's be nice. Why does it have to be this way? And that one I think is just spinning in the bushing. It's great. Basically, we have one out of four It's cooperating. Great. What I want to do. <coughs> oh, hey, look. This coolant tube's crushed. That's great. Guess I'll need to get one of those. What do you think? Oh, great. Cool. Great, grand, wonderful. Good, great, grand, wonderful. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. Um, oh, I don't even know. Maybe some PB Blaster on it. It's already got a bunch of PB Blaster on it. It's a quality exhaust hanger. All right. Enough ADD work to figure out. PB Blaster. Soak her down. Soak her down. Yeah. Get it all over there. That way I can smell great when I go in the house. Definitely stuck in the bushing. Hit on it over here. All right, so update. It's not going well. I guess, you know, one out of four bolts coming loose is all right, but we're at the, I'm not asking, I'm telling. So let's cut this front bolt out and then we can worry about the rear ones. All right, well, let me fight with this a little bit. Once I get uh, this bolt out, get it set up with the engine, crane, cherry picker, I'll come back to you guys. All right, we're back. Got that bolt cut, got that bolt out. I had to change my plan of attack here. And I have uh, two by fours on these furniture dollies because it wasn't gonna work being on the uh, engine cradle engine cherry picker, whatever you call it, I'm tired. 
So I have this kind of balanced on these for now, which is fine because then it makes it lower so the car doesn't have to go as high. But my final thought before I cut any holes here is to use the weight of the car and impact these bolts off. And I just tried this one and it worked. So we're gonna go to the other side and try that one. Yeah, I think that'll work. So we'll go up with the car a little more. Like that. Come up here. Hook this up. That one's out. Out it comes. So then, as you can see, your little furniture dollies from Harbor Freight aren't strong enough or you put the board on there the wrong way. Either way, it didn't work. Hey, it's all about this one pretty much. It's great. Well, it's out, but uh, rather inconvenient to try to pick it up. So, there you go. That's how you uh, pull an engine the hard way. Because that's how I like to do things around here. So, you know, next time here on Your Engine Shop, we'll either start on rust repair or we'll start tearing that stuff apart. We got the new engine, new engine, over here that we need to reseal and then get on the transmission that's on that engine. Clean the subframe, suspension. We got a different exhaust setup we're gonna do on this. Or yeah, the rust repair, which doesn't sound like fun either. Oh boy. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope it was entertaining. If you've made it through the whole thing, leave a like, leave a comment, make sure to subscribe to see me struggle on the rest of the repair on this car. But yeah, with that, I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna clean up. I think I'm gonna go to bed. I don't know. So see you guys next time. How do I get out of here? Don't fall.